Hey, welcome, or welcome back to 4F Beauty. Sing it if you know it. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, as you will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read it, the description, I am now using the second palette that I've got from September Rose Cosmetics. But it's not slush too. She's still working on that, making sure it's absolutely perfect. This is Brew. Brew is described as a neutral palette. And I'm sure you're all thinking, but you don't do neutral. No, I don't. But as you can see from this eye look, it's not a boring neutral. It's not 16 shades of brown. It has options. So, if you want to find out exactly how I achieved this look, And how well and this little beauty blends and applies to the eye. My friend, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and enjoy. Hey, welcome back from the intro. You will know already from thumbnail title, description, and the intro that I'm using September Rose Brew Palette. Now I don't want you falling off your chairs. This is a 16 colour neutral eyeshadow palette. Now the first slush palette, the first, the first slush, the first September Rose palette I got was the slush one. And she gave me my code, which is BOMBER in all caps, which gives you 10% off any order over £10 on anything on her website. Except for sale items, I don't think it counts on those. And initially, it was not affiliated. She has now affiliated me because so many people use my code. She said, I can't keep having you sending me this amount of, of sales and me not give you something back. So she's now made me affiliated, which... I'm still in shock by, uh, but I promise you, it will not change my review. If I don't like this palette, I'll tell you that I don't like this palette. If I like this palette, I'll tell you that I like this palette. Um, she's also started doing these, which is so cute. These are um, little mini beauty blenders. I say mini, they're, they're normal size beauty blenders. With the squared off side. I like these ones because you can really sort of, you know, and it comes in a springy egg cup. I love these. These are these are fantastic for sticking your blenders into dry as well. Um, but the foundation that I'm using today is one that I apply with a brush. So I'm not going to be testing this out today, but I will let you know how I get on with it. Today is all about this girl. So let's take a look at her, shall we? Because obviously I showed you the outside in the intro, but I haven't showed you the inside. Oh, uh, these, by the way, are $7.99. She's got cream, black, burgundy, and this gorgeous green that I went for. Um, but, you know, eight quid for a decent blender. Can't go wrong, really. And brew with September Rose Cosmetics on. It does look like a coffee cup, but I'm guessing she's got tea in there. Uh, looks like, get rid of this plastic thing because I don't need to keep that. This is what she looks like. Isn't she beautiful? Lovely good sized mirror. Let's just fold that back so you don't get dazzled. But look, now this to me is what a neutral palette should be. Yes, there are browns in there, 
but you've got oranges, you've got like a red, you've got yellows, you've got greens. This is a very, very deep green. Now this to me is exciting. This is not a boring 16 shades of brown or 15 browns and a white. This, this is really pretty. I have done swatches. I will stick them up on screen as I zoom you in. Uh, so the colours are Milk Tea, Cold Brew, Red Velvet, Iced Tea, Roy Bush, Ginger, Tea Latte, Spice Chai, French Vanilla, Pu'er, Pumpkin Spice, Sweet Tea, Classic Chai, Almond, Cinnamon, and loose leaf. Hello, I am back. And I'm not centred again. Right, uh, my channel is aimed at all skill levels from beginners right through to experts. Not that I'm claiming to be an expert, but I do all my blending in real time so beginners can keep up with me. So, if you are more expert and you can blend quicker than me, because with my chronic pain I often have to stop and give myself a wee bit of a break then please just use the speed widget and speed me up rather than complain that my videos are too long okay cheers thanks right face is washed moisturized spf and primed and all i've got on my lids is mac soft ochre paint pot which i've not set but it's been on there a while and it doesn't really feel tacky anymore now, I've got deep set eyes, sometimes called double lidded eyes, but I get the similar situation that people with hooded lids get. So I get transfer of shimmers onto the upper lid, when I'm cutting my crease I have to cut up onto the upper lid rather than just on the socket, and even when I use glitter glues I always get a bare patch in the glitter. Now, the way to tell the difference between hooded lids and deep set eyes when I look forward with my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner corner to outer corner. So I haven't got hooded lids. Hooded lids are where the static lid completely covers part or all of your mobile lid. It comes right down to the lash line. Okay, So then you either have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. You can still follow my tutorials. Okay, Get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush and just with your eyes open just sketch so get three or four mils up so that you create yourself a lid space now obviously it's going to reduce the space between your crease and your brow so just use slightly smaller brushes than i do when you're applying your colors okay now to show you what i mean about deep set eyes or they're sometimes like called double lidded eyes i've started to hear them being called to as that if i cover this eye and close it you can see I've got as much lid space again on the mobile lid that tucks back in. Okay. If I cover the static lid and close it, you can see I've got almost as much space there again that tucks back in. So that's why I get the same issue that people with hooded lids have. So all of my tutorials are hooded lid friendly. Enough chatting. I want to put some colour on. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm going in with pumpkin spice. This is my Royal and Langnickel Chic Pro Crease Brush that I'm using. Love this. Love, 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 love. Now, obviously because I've not set my base initially, I'm just going to pat this on rather than sweep it all the way across. Because otherwise the um, the base will catch it and will make it look patchy, which is not what we want. So I'm just patting this colour above my crease and taking it up to about sort of three or four mils below my brow and I'm just tapping this on to 
the unset primer. This has got some pigment. I don't know why I sound surprised because Slush has as well. Slush 2 is still coming by the way, it's just been delayed. She's had some issues with uh, production on it and she won't release anything if it's not perfect. Jacqueline Hill could take uh, some tips from her on that. Seriously, I'm not a drama channel, but oh my goodness, those Jacqueline Hill lipsticks. I mean, that's clearly mould growing out of the lipsticks. I said when she launched them with JH on that they were probably going to be old because the company is Jacqueline Cosmetics because obviously she doesn't want to use John Hill's surname anymore. But clearly, at least the... The unit itself was obviously manufactured when she was still married to him. So it's a pretty safe bet that the stuff inside it was manufactured around about the same time. But all I'm doing now, now I've, I've built the colour up. I'm just very, very lightly, because I'm holding this brush right at the very end, doing tiny little circular movements, blending towards the nose as I come in, and then away from the nose as I go back out again. Just to soften the edges and make sure I've not got any patchy areas. Look at that. This is this is my idea of a neutral palette. Bless her, she said, um, I didn't think you'd be interested in this one. And I'm like, uh, yeah, because it's not boring browns. It's got other colours in it to interest me. But for those of you who need just plain browns for work, it's got enough of those in here that you can create plenty of different looks. This deep creasing on my eye really bugs me just here. It's where my eye was pulled around when I was a kid at the ophthalmic because this is the eye that I'm blind in. So I'm just going to unfortunately have to stretch my lid out to get this to go on non-patchy. But um, don't do that. Unless you absolutely have to, or you will end up with, um, you will end up with deep creasing like I've got, and I promise you, it's a nightmare, and it only ever gets worse as you get older. This yellow is beautiful. I mean, just look at the depth of colour. Does it? No, it just smells like like I should have. So it hasn't got a scent to it. So if you are um, if you do have very, very sensitive skin and you, you react badly to um, smells in palettes, this just, this is unscented, this is just normal smelling eyeshadow. And would you look at how beautiful that is. And that's gone on to a non-set base and just look at the strength of colour. This girl knows what she's doing when it comes to pigments, eh? Yeah, she was properly surprised when I said that I was going to I was going to get this. She's like, "Oh, I didn't think you'd want to." I'm like, uh, "Yeah, because it's it's not just brown. It's as I said, it's got it's got yellows, it's got oranges, it's got greens, it's got a you know the red velvet and the the roy bush are kind of red based, and I'm like, I just love it. Love, 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 love. Right, uh, I'm just gonna." Grab a, I know this looks dirty, but it is just stained from various pigments I've used. Uh, I'm gonna, this is a clean washcloth, and I'm just going to take the yellow off of this brush. I've started using this rather than my colour switch. Um, I've still got my colour switch, and I tend to tap off into that. But um, I have found that, particularly with natural hair brushes, these are synthetic, by the way. Um, I just find that taking the colour off on, um, I either use a microfiber cloth or I use a nice soft washcloth. I find it's it's kinder to the bristles than the rough sponge of the colour switch. Right, I'm going to go into Spice Chai, same brush. Just tap off a bit. Look at that. And because obviously the base is now set, I can now swing, oh my goodness, look at that. I can now swing this through the crease, backwards and forwards like a windscreen wiper. As you can see, 
Wow. That's beautiful. Pick up a little bit more. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to do circular movements. But I'm going to keep the brush in contact with this line all the time. So I'm not going to travel up the eye. Because I still want to be able to see that yellow. So circular movements all the way across to the middle. And then reverse the direction. And come back again. Are you seeing this? That blended so easily. And there's no patching there at all. Ooh, look at that. Oh yeah, I'm going to be playing with this palette quite a bit by the look of it. I will at some point do you um, a neutral look with this palette, I promise. But I just wanted to show all my colour lovers that were perhaps thinking the way Michelle did, the lady that runs September Rose, perhaps they were thinking the same as her, that, you know, because I love my colours, I wouldn't be interested in this because it is it is technically a neutral palette. But I just want to show you, you can get a very non-neutral look out of it. I can show you a bit easier the blending with this eye because obviously I can close it. But just look at that. I mean, that's just. That is blended. It's just. All I'm doing now is deepening the pigment up. That's stunning. Sorting out my tiger striping that I get there, or the barcoding because of the deeps are deep creasing that I've got there. Oh, oh, this is pretty. This is very, very pretty. Ooh, which colour am I going to go in with next? Am I going to go greens or am I going to go reds? I've done quite a bit of greens recently. I might go into the reds and do a real like bright. Nice bright look, I think. So let's grab. No, don't want that one. I want. That one. Right, this is my chic, uh, again, Warren Lang Nickel Chic Pro. This is the eyeshadow brush, which is flatter, as you can see. These are two quid. They are bloody awesome. Um, I have got a film linked down below. Um, where I talk about the brushes that I like uh, and the details of this are in there if you're in the UK because obviously it's not so easy to always get the kind of things that uh, Americans can get oh I don't know which colour to go in with next I'm going to go into Roy Bush, I think which is R-O-O-I-B-O-S if you're wondering I know it looks like Rui Boss, but it's not. It's actually Roy Bush. It's um, it's a South African tea um, plant, which uh, has no caffeine, um, and it's got a very delicate flavour. So you don't brew it for very long. Sort of three, four, maximum five minutes is the longest you want to steep it, and it's got a very delicate, light flavour. But again no caffeine so it's it's brilliant if you're um if, if you like tea and you currently can't, can't have caffeine for whatever reason roybush are fantastic a lot of place a lot of uh, companies over here like technically call it red bush because that's what roybush is it, it's south african for red bush um and they do one with vanilla in technically do a roybush red 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 bush and vanilla and that's lovely you don't need sugar in it, you don't need milk in it. It's, right, so this is the Roy Bush. I'm going to run that through the crease. Just look at the depth of colour that just goes straight on. 
There is no mucking about with this at all. Which is great because I've already done one look today. So my skin is super, super sensitive at the moment. <clears throat> and this is not hurting at all. Normally, when I do my second look, because of the amount of blending I have to do, my eyelids feel like I've been going at them with a cheese grater. But I'm having to, to barely blend this at all. And it's just... Wow. Like, genuine wow. Right, I've popped a little bit more on the tips of these bristles. I'm going to do circular movements again, but this time I'm going to keep it so it's flat as it follows the line. And I'm not going to try and take it up the line at all, because I still want that orange to have its moment. But I just want to soften just the edges of that deeper burgundy, just a fraction. And again, reverse the direction of the circles as you come back. That's lovely. I'm loving this. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to pop a little bit of that just on the outer edge. The eye to deepen it up a fraction. Now, obviously, if you have had to create your crease, that was the point that you go. What have I got under my feet? Oh, a bit of cotton wool have dropped. Okay. Uh, that's the point that instead of following your natural eye socket like I did, you just follow the line that you created. So, pick up some more pigment and when I'm using a darker pigment and I'm doing windscreen, I do tend to do it in short windscreens like this before going for the big whack because you're less likely to get skipping or fallout if you start off that way. And pick up a bit more of that pigment. And again, just tiny little circular movements all the way along that line. As I said, much easier to show you with this eye because I can actually close the eye. And the reason I'm doing circles, if I slow down and show you, you can see it actually gently moves your skin on your eyelid so that you don't get any white gaps because, you know, as you get older, your lids become less firm. Um, but also I've lost, I think, 10, 11 stone now. And, you know, even if you're younger, if you've lost a lot of weight, you can have the same problem of your lids not being as firm. And some some people genetically just have less taut eyelids. So again, just filling in the outer third there. This is such a beautiful palette. I'm loving it, loving it, loving it. Loving it like this. Now, shall I do an all matte look or shall I stick a shimmer on? Nah, let's stick a shimmer on. Okie dokie. This is um, from the brushes that I recommend. This is one of the ones that I got from AliExpress, Animal, Ranimal, something like that. This is their medium shader brush, too. A lot of companies would call this a concealer brush. So I'm going to go into iced tea. Picks up well on the brush. Initially I'm going to put it on dry and see how it how much oomph we get from it. OK, 
that. pigment now never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment so I'm gonna pick up some pigment here this is just a fixing spray you can use anything you can even just use plain water so I'm gonna wet the brush but I'm gonna dry off the ferrule so that there's no moisture going down and loosening the glue that's holding these bristles in place and that's it. Ooh, 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 hello. Oh, this gives a really beautiful finish. Are you seeing this? Wow. Right, I'm going to clean off this brush and obviously dry it on the um, washcloth that I've got here and just very gently just buff where the edge of that makes. Now obviously you can use your finger to apply it rather than using a, a brush and wetting it but I don't feel like poking my eyeballs out today thanks. Just blend the edge there so it, it blends in nicely. Wow. And I'm going to go back into iced tea. Pack the pigment on. This is quite a soft pigment, so don't press too hard. Like I just did. Again, dry the ferrule off. And again, because of that creasing, I'm going to have to hold the lid out. Otherwise it just, it kind of packs into the crease without being blended. And then throughout the day as I move my eye, I get multicoloured freckles happening. Okay, I'm just going to dry the brush off. Go back into that pigment to pick up a little bit more. Not being funny, I've used high-end palettes that have not blended this well. And have not produced this depth of colour. I mean, you could see I did not cut that crease. That shimmer is pigmented enough to go over the deep burgundy red that I'd used. Drying the brush off again and just buffing where it makes. If you think you're losing some of the colour, just literally pick up a tiniest little bit of the Roy Bush so that when you blend you're not buffing any colour away. That is so pretty. Ooh! Right. I'm going to pause you while I go and um, put some foundation and stuff on. And um, I'll be back to finish off this eye look. So I'll see you right now. I'm back. Okay. Let's do the under eye. I can't get over how beautiful this looks. Right, going in with a nice flat top brush. I'm going to dip it into Roy Bush. Just the tips. 
connect it up with the outer edge there and just run it under my lower lash line because at the moment um, I'm having a problem wearing eyeliner my eyes are just so watery with my fibro and uh, my hay fever at the moment so what I do is I just run that and just take it up ever so slightly so it comes up ever so slightly darker just on the edge there and it gives you the illusion of having can you see the difference between the two this side looks like it's more pulled out and more coming up so you can still get the same effect that you would have using a winged liner but doing it with shadows instead How awesome is that? Love it. Okay. Now the big question is what colour am I going to smoke it out with? That is a very good question. Right, the brush I'm going to use, this was the brush that was in the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. Uh, Swamp Queen I think it was called, but I love it because it's it's flat top but it's chunky. Uh, I think I might go into, let's go into Ginger, which is a, a really lovely sort of caramelly colour. I'm just going to run that all the way along, just gently buffing the edge of that Roy bush, just to soften it. I like this a lot. See now if all neutral palettes were like this I'd have more of them. Because this is just amazing. And I'm not bullshitting because you've watched me do this. You know, I've not sped anything up, I've not cut anything out. You've seen me apply this and you've seen how easily it all blended. Right. Now this is a, believe it or not, an old lip brush that I bought about 12 years ago on eBay. I'm going to go into Jeffrey's sarcophagus. And just put a bit of this up under the brow. You could of course go in with um, either the white or the cream matte if you wanted. Um, but I like to have a nice... I like to use my um, highlight under my brow bone just to tie it in. And pop it on my inner corner. And with my shape of eye, I like to bring it along under the tear duct and just blend it in with the colours that we've run under the eye. You don't have to do that, you can just do the tear duct. But you can see I actually think it looks more finished with it coming along like that. It suits my eye shape. If it doesn't suit your eye shape, don't do it. You know, it's your face, it's your decision. Everybody's faces are different. Okay, I'm going to pause you one last time. And I'm going to... I'm going to pop some of this Colourpop cream liner into my waterline. I'm going to chuck highlight over the rest of my face. Do some mascara, do some lippy, do something with this hair. I'll be back for my final thoughts. See you right now. And I'm back. I've had to pin my fringe back because it was doing all kinds of weird things. Uh, and then ended up looking really flat and horrible. So I pinned it back. It's out of the way. We can forget about it. Right, uh, other things I've used on my face. I'm trying out a new foundation, so 
Uh, I'm doing my foundation reviews a bit differently. I'm going to wear them sort of three or four times before I actually do the wear time test on screen so I can give you a more rounded view of what I think of them. So I'm not going to tell you what the foundation is yet. Uh, concealer is Jeffrey's Magic Star in C3. I used my Butter Bronzer and I used the L'Oreal Life's a Peach Blush in 01 Peach Addict. I think we can only get the one shade of that over here in the UK but I have seen people in the US using uh, or naming it something different so that's Peach Addict. Um, the highlight obviously was Sarcophagus because I told you that. Mascara is the Con Catrice Glamondol Waterproof Volume Mascara. This is a absolute dupe for Bad Girl Bang by Benefit but it's cheaper and it's waterproof and the lip gloss is Jeffrey's Wet Peach just want to show you something though Jeffrey's Wet Peach for 4.5 mils or something Jouer's 6 mil This is a nice enough gloss. It's not, it's not gumming my lips together. Admittedly, I haven't tested it with my hair down yet outside to see if my hair sticks to it. Um, but this is obnoxious. It will not fit. Look, if I get, look, this is the size of a normal lipstick base. It will not fit in any of my lipstick holders at all and it's it's too huge to fit into my going out purse for the evening so I could never wear this on a night out but we're not talking about that right now oh and setting spray was Milani make it dewy because I was feeling a bit I've, I've powdered a little bit too much but we are talking about September Rose Brew palette. So, what do I think? First off, I love the fact it's so easy to bend back. You don't feel like you're breaking the spine when you bend it back. Love that. And love the fact it's not a reflective thing, so you can actually see the colours. But you can see what I mean. If I hadn't told you this was a neutral palette, would you have thought it was a neutral palette? Because it's got the yellows, the oranges, the reds, the greens. This to me is what a neutral palette should be because it's got interesting colours in. I mean, look at this beautifully stunning, bright eye look that I've done from a neutral palette. Um, so, yeah, I, I, from what I've used so far, I'm loving this. You saw my reaction to how well it blended. Um, I was shocked at how well they blended and I've used her formula so the formula has improved I mean don't get me wrong the formula for slush was amazing which if you're wondering where my slush is it's here just to show you slush is hella bright so if that does scare you and it's not your I was about to say cup of tea and then realised what I was saying. So if you did want to start off with a slightly more neutral palette, this could be your go-to. But if you are someone who, like me, loves a bit of colour, this is not going to be boring. You will find colours in here that you can use to create beautifully bright um, or smoky looks. I'm going to try the greens in there next and see if I can get a nice a nice sort of smoky eye going on with it. And I promise you I will do a full-on brown neutral look for those of you who need one for work, college, school, etc. But so far, having tried this, would I recommend it? Yeah, absolutely. And that's not because my code is now affiliated. 
Um, Bomber in caps will save you 10% on this. I will earn a small commission. I don't know how much yet because I've only just been made affiliated. Um, but I can assure you, it's not going to be the 10% that you save off of this. Um, and just so you know, when it arrived, it was actually in two bubble wrapped bags. And then it was inside another bubble wrapped packet in a box. So this was absolutely superbly um, packaged when she sends them out. So you don't have any worries, particularly if you are an overseas customer, highly unlikely you're going to get any damage to your palette unless someone stomped on it en route. Uh, don't forget she also does these and I will be trying this uh, probably tomorrow um, but as I said the foundation that I was wearing today I was using with a brush so there we go uh, I hope you enjoyed this I hope you found it fun informative helpful and that I didn't blether at you too much uh, please double check you are still subscribed because YouTube is still unsubscribing people at a rate of knots, which is highly frustrating. Uh, uh, so now, all that remains for me to say is your stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.